tonight we talk about data strategy and how we look at the data strategy. Um, I know that talking to our clients, um, in this conversation many times we uh, kind of came to the same similar conclusions that the data strategy is something that has can be looked at as four pillars. The business outcome is probably the most important one, uh, knowing what you want to achieve with your data strategy. Uh, the second one is mature data ecosystem that includes data governance, um, sourcing of the data. The number three is um, data science practices in the organization. And number four is the culture that uh, values data-driven decisions. So we have many of those same elements. I think we probably arrange the chess pieces on the board maybe a little bit differently. The difference might come from the fact that we essentially make a lot of data. So there's a common misconception that we just bring the data in from wherever it lives and put it in a big database and make it available. Nothing could be further from the truth. We're collecting data from hundreds of countries and federal jurisdictions around the world. It's being updated millions of times a day. All of those countries have different laws, different writing systems, different languages. So there's just a very data-centric view of the data supply chain of where is it all coming from and how do we know that the quality and the accuracy and all of the aspects of it that we've talked about are what we expect them to be and how do we know when to intervene and so forth. All of those steps have governance and they have quality assurance baked into them. So that's the sort of the data centric view of the data strategy. But then there's the how are the customer needs changing? How do we know that we're meeting those needs? How do we know that the questions are getting more complex over time, that we're sort of making new mistakes and solving new problems for our customers? So data science is everywhere and anywhere at any given time, and there's a lot of things being called data science that quite honestly are just math, and that doesn't necessarily make it science. So we do have to understand how these processes are being federated and how they're being used, and to continuously make that better as the availability of tools and techniques and data sets changes, that's a big challenge. Um, I just uh, completely agree with you. I, I really like your framework um, that you described uh, around data and creating data products and being a authoritative source of any data in around address validation, around location intelligence, requires a lot of hard work. We are getting data from our partners um, and we are bringing the data together. We have to be really uh, good at metadata, understanding metadata around it and bringing it together. So all the processes that you described absolutely essential for us as well. Our ability to understand what happened in a place and what happened to the businesses around that place and what continues to happen as a result of their reaction to it is only beginning to become powerful. Uh, the possibilities there are unimaginable. So uh, Anthony, uh, what is your take on how um, enterprises or firms should pick data partners? I, I like your use of the word partner. I think probably the, the dangerous term that I hear sometimes is data vendor and there's this implication that it's just a commodity and I'll buy it from wherever it's cheapest and call it a day. And I think really for mature organizations that are using data as a strategic asset, nothing could be further from the truth. And at the same time, I think there is just pure hygiene that you do want sure. to do when you pick, pick a data partner, right? You, you want to understand how f the quality of the data surely, right? As we talked about it a lot. Um, you want to understand the frequency of updates, uh, how you will be able to consume the data, making sure that um, you can consume the data as a data set, as an API or whatever, uh, in, in the way that you are looking to integrate the data into your workflows. So we have a strategy that's very much focused on data as a service, and what that means is a very intimate, sort of embedded relationship with a customer's application or problem, like we have with you at, at Petty Bowes. That is a, a really important relationship. How do you choose such a partner? Well, I think for starters, you should look at whether they see themselves as a data vendor or as doing something more mature with the data. Do they have a good answer for what, how do you see quality or do they just say the word accuracy a lot and hope you'll stop asking? 
Do they have a thoughtful strategy around data? If all they can talk about is how many records they have and how cheap it is and how you can get more if you want it, um, you might want to think about that as a commodity and not necessarily as a partnership. I think this kind of another element, if you are building, if you are picking a partner, um, start with defining the real problems that you have and give a partner a chance to come back to you with a solution of the problem, right? And yeah. through, this, through these interactions, you will truly understand whether the person across the table is a partner or a data vendor. I think that's critical, 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 that you lead with a problem or a challenge and not lead with a solution or a set of data. We don't walk into a drugstore because we have an aspirin deficiency. We walk in there because we have a headache and maybe what we need is more water, right? So it's sometimes just understanding what the, what the problem is as it's presenting itself to the customer. When we think about prioritization of investments, we know companies cannot do everything. They have to choose. So prioritizing data investments is an interesting way of looking at prioritizing any business decision. The first thing I would say is do you look at your data as an asset or just a cost that you want to contain? And if you're not thinking of it as, as an asset, I think you should seriously reconsider that position. So what do you do with an asset? You try to grow it. You try to utilize it as efficiently as possible. You try to make sure that that asset is part of your overall strategy for serving your customers and the problems that you address with your business. As you said, commitment to innovation and, yeah. and moving forward um, together is, is yeah. really important. I, I think also maybe this, this transitions into another topic that we wanted to talk about, which is the changing world. The cost of doing nothing here is not nothing. Things are changing so quickly that organizations that are not seriously thinking about how they choose their data partners maybe ought to be really seriously making sure that they're doing that on purpose because I can't think of a good reason to ignore this right now with all of this change around us.